All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Gwen Rose. I'm the Director of Marketing and Community Relations at Peninsula Clean Energy. Um, I hope everyone is well today. I'm at the tail end of a cold, um, so hopefully I don't have to uh, put you on mute while I while I deal with that. But um, Jerry, why don't you just go ahead and advance the slide? So I'll, I'll give you all an overview of Peninsula Clean Energy, give you a sense of why we're here today, why we're looking for partners to help us with some of our marketing initiatives, um, give you a little bit of sense of the timeline, and, and then hand it back over to Jerry to talk about the process, uh, let you understand a little bit more about what we're looking for, and then, as Jerry said, get into that Q&A. Uh, so go ahead and advance to the next slide. So this was all in the RFP, but I just wanted to sort of underscore and start with who we are. Uh, so Peninsula Clean Energy is the official electricity provider for San Mateo County and the city of Los Banos. We provide clean electricity for 97% of the residents in our service territory, which has a population of 81, 000, uh, 810,000. Um, we were formed with the mission to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by expanding access to sustainable and affordable energy solutions. And then we take everything that is in excess of that to reinvest it back into the community through grants, sponsorships, and programs that lower the cost of switching uh, from fossil fuels to clean electricity. So I'll talk a little bit more about what we mean by that. Jerry, go ahead and advance to the next slide. All right. so. In case you're not familiar with this model, because having a 97% market share for uh, anything is is pretty extraordinary, um, but that's uh, you know the community choice aggregation model uh, is essentially if you look at this graph of how electricity is generated and that gets delivered. So we sit on the left, the, the left. Um, we provide 100% clean electricity, um, and we send that to uh, our customers through the wires that are owned by PG&E. So again, we are responsible for buying the electricity. We make sure that that's a portfolio of solar, wind, geothermal, basically clean electricity. Um, and then PG&E delivers, they provide the bill, and then customers use the electricity to power their everyday lives. Um, but really that's uh, only part of the picture. Because over the next few years, we're going to be moving from that 100% clean energy uh, to providing essentially a zero carbon renewable electricity um, at almost all hours of the day. Um, and that shift from 100% clean to zero carbon renewable at almost all hours of the day, that is a real groundbreaking shift to a new gold standard. Um, and there's a lot of nuance there, but it's it's going to be a really exciting milestone that we're going to be working towards over the next few years. And then in terms of, you know, customers who we're sending the electricity to, um, we know that electric vehicles, electric appliances, rooftop solar, batteries, these are all really key strategies to reduce the use of fossil fuels and to combat climate change, which is our mission, and to help clean the air. Um, and so to truly meet this challenge, it's going to require a shift in how we reach our customers and how we package sustainability for them. So, you know, our team um, at Peninsula Clean Energy, I think we're at about 45 right now, uh, our team is doing some amazing work to think about how to make the switch from fossil fuels to electricity easier and cheaper. So they're doing a lot of the thought leadership on, you know, how do you fundamentally make electric vehicle infrastructure ubiquitous and accessible to everybody uh, at an affordable uh, cost? Um, and then they're designing programs to enable people to access that charging infrastructure. We're looking at how do you make installing electric appliances cheaper and easier? We have zero interest loans. We provide rebates that lower the upfront cost. And we even do some amount of helping with direct installs. And we're going to be taking that and really amplifying that and making that available to all of our customers. And that represents a real new approach to electrifying uh, buildings. Um, so these changes are, are exciting uh, and they really expand what we're doing today. Um, and it is going to require a new form of marketing. So in the past, we've been fairly transactional. Um, 
a lot of outbound marketing. We do a lot of communications about our rebates and our programs, but we're really looking at how do we shift to a more customer centric approach? How do we package sustainability so that we can really generate the behavior change uh, and drive the actions that we need to get customers to make the switch? Okay, next slide, Jerry. So just to give you kind of a sense of the this moment in time, uh, and Jerry will go through the, the schedule for the RFP, but, you know, so I mentioned that Peninsula Clean Energy uh, was founded in 2016. So again, we're community led, we're a non for profit. We were established by a vote of all of the cities and towns in San Mateo County, 2016. And then we have over the last few years, refreshed our brands look and feel a couple of times. And the most recent effort there was in 2020. Um, what we found uh, earlier this year, so, you know, we put a lot of effort into researching and listening to our customers. Um, we do an annual survey where we take a randomized sample of our service territory. We uh, collect information through surveys. We listen to residents at workshops and focus groups. Um, and what that body of research tells us is that we have awareness, favorability, and trust gaps in our constituency that we are really eager to address. Um, so that's driving some of our desire to update the brand in addition to the sort of um, change in how we're interacting with our customers. So at the same time, uh, earlier this year in July, we transitioned to a new uh, CEO. Uh, and at the same time, half of our team is actually new. Um, so we're at this really interesting moment in time and growth for our team. It's it's really exciting. Um, and at the same time, we're getting ready to launch some ambitious programs that I've mentioned around decarbonization um, and helping people make the switch through electric vehicles and, and, and electric appliances. Um, so those programs, some of our really ambitious programs launch next year. Uh, and then we're also working towards that 100% renewable energy standard. Um, so really now is the time with all of this going on, all of these opportunities paired with that gap in what our customers understand or know about us today. Um, it's time to really stand back, think about our brand platform, think about our marketing strategy and start coming up with ways to cohesively tie it all together. We have a jet flying overhead. Jerry, can you actually hear me? I can't hear the jet at all, actually. You sound great. Okay, maybe I just started yelling because I can barely hear myself. So, okay, glad that it's not. Okay, well, that covers sort of who we are, why we're here today. So let me just hand it back over to Jerry to to jump into the... There, I can't see the... Uh, are there any uh, uh, questions so far? I do not see any questions yet. Okay. I can't see the panel. So if there are questions, um, can you interrupt me and, and we'll, we'll address them on... Uh, as they come up. Okay. Uh, I just want to uh, go over the schedule 3.1. It this is everything that I'm covering is in the RFP, uh, but I just want to walk through it with you. Um, release with 29. Today we're doing the webinar. If you have, we'll answer as many questions as we can. And if other questions come up, you can submit those to Gwen, email them to her. Address is in the uh, RFP. And then we'll post. Uh, Everything by the 18th, answer to all questions. Proposal deadline is due November 1st, 5 p.m. So um, a little under, almost a month. Um, on the 8th, we'll notify the, we'll, we'll uh, pick a selection, a smaller number that looks like it's the best fit, and we'll have that on the November 8th. We'll get that out November 8th. So the, for the shortlisted proposers, uh, you should take a look at the contract. It is a requirement that we use the Peninsula Clean Energy contract. If you uh, look over that and there are some issues with some of the terms, you can propose changes to the terms. We need that by the 22nd. So that's the red line. Um, I, I can't promise that those changes will be made, but um, we don't have a, a, a lot of time after that to, uh, to negotiate that back and forth if any changes are needed. So. Uh, November 22nd contract red line. Uh, we're going to meet with you as uh, personally as we can or by video if needed uh, between the 8th and the 22nd. Okay, there's not a, uh, it's a relatively compressed time. So um, uh, 
please uh, keep that under consideration. And then, and then um, our goal is to make a selection December 1st. And then we have until the 18th uh, to get the contract uh, approved. So the proposal doesn't work as a contract. Um, if you look through the contract, we have to put the information together exactly in the order of the contract. There's things we need to do for the contract that won't be in the proposal. We'll have to get that back and forth between us and any lawyers that need to be involved and, and have all that done and agreed to by the 18th. And then we can get it in for board of directors approval uh, December uh, 21st. And then and when the year starts, we zoom out of the blocks. So far, so good. All right. Yeah, Jerry, we have a couple questions, but I think we can hold them for the end so far. Okay. Um, so uh, our evaluation criteria are in the RFP. Uh, I just wanted to add sort of a, a little bit of extra what we're thinking about um, here, and hopefully that helps you uh, in the in the RFP. So uh, relevant experience of the agency, and in particular our account team, we'd like to have background and relevant experience of our specific account team. Um, if you are using partners or subcontractors, uh, you know, maybe uh, you have you somebody external to the agency for media, uh, please let us know and, and, and outline that as well. Uh, we're looking for alignment between your agency and Peninsula Clean Energy. Um, alignment with the kind of the, the values and the work that we do in clean energy, uh, your process and your proposed approach. And we're trying to see how that fits with uh, PCE's direction. Uh, we're looking for a range of capabilities. So uh, all your clients are different and we're looking for how you are able to uh, apply different strategies and different creatives to meet the, the kind of specific need. And then in the relevant work samples, we'll be looking for that as well. So we want work samples that are relevant to our situation as much as possible. And we're really looking for you to articulate to us what your client's problem was, uh, what your strategy and approach was, the solution that you picked, and, and results. References, we're looking to confirm uh, those items, the cost, responsiveness, and in particular, your ability to meet their specific needs. Now, cost, this isn't a, a low cost bid, um, uh, but costs are, are important. And there are, um, we'll, we'll, I have one more slide that we'll talk about that briefly, but there are, we have many campaigns and a lot of work to do, but there's two campaigns for the purposes of this RFP that we're asking you to go to, to dive a little uh, deeper. Um, and uh, there, we'd like you to give us kind of a project cost, but also please also give us your general rate. Uh, we have three task areas, uh, brand, campaigns, and media. And uh, we think that uh, many respondents will want to, uh, or, or have the capability or with partners to provide for all of our needs. And then some are uh, might specialize, for example, uh, you know, in media. And so we uh, encourage you to respond uh, either for part or for all of our needs. So far, so good? Okay, I'm not getting the, Gwen has a little button that she can push. I get electric shock if I need to stop. And um, I don't feel anything yet, so I'll, 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 uh, I'll just keep going here. Um, okay, here, um, there, for these campaigns, uh, we'd like for you to have a look at them and, and we'd like to hear what your strategy might be and your approach. Uh, we know that um, uh, uh, there's a limited amount that you know about us and, and our customers and, and you know, can't be that detailed and what we actually do might be different. Okay, so we understand that. But we're just looking for uh, to try to see how you work this and, uh, and then your rough cost and what you think we might expect in these two different campaigns. Uh, I'm not going to read this. This is the same information that's in the RFP, but I'll pause for a minute if anybody has any questions about either of these. Yeah. So, Jerry, one question came in that says, does the upcoming EV managed charging campaign require app development? No, no, no. Um, well, if you if you have some expertise there, <laughs> you can um, uh, you, you, you could do that. But no, it's not part of the marketing responsibility. The app is uh, uh, will, will be something that we get uh, elsewhere. 
but driving users to adopt the app. That that's definitely part of that. Oh, we have a question. No, oh, just, no, just underscoring said. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's see if there's another one related to this slide that would be. I mean, we could talk about it. So one question came through, which was, what was the biggest surprise in the recent brand survey? Uh, um, I could tell you what uh, my, my surprise was. Do you want to tell me what your surprise was? You go first. Um, I think the the biggest surprise in the, um, the information that we were getting recently is there's a, a gap in trust. Um, there's a gap in trust for our uh, our constituents. We have a, a a group of our constituents that are on board, concerned about climate change, uh, understand our work, love our work and what we do, and uh, and that's all good. Then we have another group of customers that uh, you know are confused and uh, angry. Maybe there's all this change happening. They're worried about the cost and. Um, and so there's some distrust of um, contractors. Uh, we're, part of the industry is a little bit new. There's some distrust uh, in the industry in general. And then we get kind of lumped into there. Uh, there's been uh, increases in uh, electric costs. Uh, they're not sure if we're causing that. So th my biggest surprise was that there, there's, there is, is the, um, the, the consternation among our, uh, our customers and the uh, gap in uh, trust actually. Yeah, I would say so, you know, if we have about 59% of our customers that don't actually know who we are, um, 70, I think it's something like 75% don't have enough opinion, don't have enough information to actually have an opinion to be favorable or actively unfavorable. Um, and when you dig in a little bit on um, why it's a it's a pretty small group of people that are actively unfavorable uh, through the brand survey, but when you dig in, there are just flat out misperceptions. They think we're a branch of PG&E. They think we are a for profit, uh, or and or they think we are charging more. Uh, and there was another one uh, that we are um, an additional charge. So those are three misperceptions. And the good news is they're misperceptions. And if we can correct them, uh, we can possibly convert unfavorable um, back to favorable. So there's a lot of opportunity on the brand side um, just to increase general awareness as well as increase familiarity and favorability. If we can move into this, uh, kind of the general Q&A. Are there any questions on this in particular? If not, let me, let me um, take this off the screen and we can move into the general Q&A. Anything specific to this? Um, well, I, yeah, I was just looking at the, oh, okay. the the questions related to brand awareness and EVs. Um, yeah, well, so I the rest, the, the rest, yeah, are sort of general questions. Okay. Uh, uh, then um, uh, let me, uh, I'll just close this, stop sharing, and, and we can just uh, open it up for general questions. Okay. Um, Okay, so one of the questions that came through says, thank you, what is the length of time for this contract? Um, we're looking we're looking at programs that go out a uh, number of years. Uh, so uh, we would, um, uh, it's, it's um, I don't think I can answer that uh, right now. We have to, uh, figure out our contracts and our um, uh, fiscal years and make sure those things line up. Uh, but I would say that the program, these programs are going out, uh, you know, a, a year. Our fiscal year ends in, in next June and they go out well beyond that. Okay. Uh, the next question is, have you set a budget or budget threshold for the scope or any of the scope elements, for example, media spend? Um, we, we, we do have some uh, numbers, but, um, but we haven't released them and we wanna, we wanna keep that open. We don't want to uh, send things one way or the other. So um, I hate to sound like I'm, I'm thinking of a number, um, but we've thought through this. We've worked with uh, others um, 
maybe some of you, uh, to cost some of this out. So we have some idea, sort of some range, but there's not a specific uh, number right now, no. Yeah. And then, you know, because we're going to be doing different campaigns and in some cases it's going to really depend on the audience and then what are the challenges or channels um, that we need to go through to reach those audiences. So definitely spend is going to be somewhat relative to the, the campaign and the campaign strategy. Okay, um, got a question. Can agencies outside of California submit proposals? Is there a penalty if an agency is outside of California? There's not a, there's not a penalty, no. Uh, we do, in general, um, uh, we, we try to hire uh, locally. You know, we're a uh, government agency. Uh, it's great if we can hire in San Mateo County or Los Angeles. Uh, it's great if we can hire in... Uh, California, uh, we're not restricted to that. Uh, we'd say that um, uh, international is a, a sort of a challenge. Uh, the other thing that's nice is that if we're in a sort of a similar time zone, it's also helpful. So uh, we wouldn't um, exclude a great fit with a great agency that's not in um, our territory or California. Um, but it's great if you're closed. Okay. There were a couple of questions in that vein. Let me make sure we've answered them with that answer. Um, okay, but yeah, I think you answered that question. Um, there's a question, could we see any customer research data to aid in our response? Uh, if you want to submit a question uh, to Gwen for certain information, then we could uh, make that available for everybody. Uh, you can make assumptions. Um, the data that we have is um, voluminous and detailed. Uh, but if there's some kind of general questions, you can submit them by the 13th, and we'll respond with that for everybody, and we can dig into the data for that. Yeah, and the other the other way you could access it is, um, I did give a presentation to the board two months oh, ago. Here's a tip. It's public. It's public information. Some okay. so, um, you could we could put a link to that. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Um. Okay. Let's see what else. Are you seeking recommendations on paid media budget to achieve your awareness objectives? Or are you mostly focused on agency capabilities, strategy approach, and free st fee structure for labor? That's a good question. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if I understand the question. Are we... What... Are, are you seeking recommendations on paid media budget to achieve awareness objectives? So, you know, we've talked about how do you, how do we get from 40% to 60%? Yeah. Um, yes. I would say yes. Yeah. Yeah, I would apply uh, uh, whatever part of whichever task area uh, that you're interested in helping us with. Um, if you could apply that to those two um, campaigns, that'd be helpful. Okay. Hold on. Would you, let me see. Would you recommend or require gathering input from customers in the brand development process? And of course, this is the time where I need to cough. So Jared, you want to take the first stab? Yeah. Uh, if I understand it, would we, um, so we've done, we, uh, um, we have, uh, we have, um, gathered information from we have had input from uh, customers to this point and we did some uh, brand exploratory work this summer uh, but i think that's an ongoing process i think we continue to want to as we move forward i think we continue to want to get information i think we probably we do want to test our understanding with customers 
so that would be a yes. Um, you could uh, identify that specifically. It would be a good idea in your proposal. You know, your assumption around um, research. You put that in your proposal. What you would do about that? How you would cost that? That's fair answer, Gwen. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think as we develop a brand strategy, as we develop messaging for our campaigns, understanding how those land with our customers is going to be important. Um, so, um, yeah, I think customer research is important at all stages of this process. Uh, and we do have resources that we can bring to bear. Um, and so I think that would be a conversation about how that works. Something else? Yes, they're coming in. Um, let's see. How many agencies have you invited to this pitching process? What was the selection criteria for the agencies you invited into the pitching process? Uh, we invited um, about 20. Um, I think we have uh, others, uh, because it's an open process, that have joined uh, that we didn't um, invite, we invited, we did a, um, uh, a survey uh, of um, firms uh, in a couple of different places, uh, recommendations from um, our peers, other CCA. Uh, we also use the uh, CPUC has a, um, a database of um, agencies and companies of all sorts that um, uh, are, um, are, 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 have a diversity certification or certified to have some diversity. Uh, so we definitely use that as well to pull from. Okay. There was another question if there's interest openness in additional customer research and gathering new data. So I think we've answered that. Yes, we are interested. We are open. We have lots of hypotheses um, about what our customers you know, interests are and how to motivate them, um, but we are bringing in partners to help us really develop that out and understand it. Um, there's a question that says, would you like to show people when energy is cleaner and how they can use it? Uh, um, no. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not exactly. Uh, I, I don't know if I understand that. I might not hit the question <clears throat> yeah. here, but um, there is um, uh, a, a, a broad range of understanding uh, among our customers. We have a, a, a fairly green-oriented group that really knows what's going on, and then there's a large uh, group of people that don't care. <laughs> uh, we did. Um, a little bit of research, uh, we called uh, people, um, surveyed them and called them, is your gas heater, uh, gas or electric, and uh, many of them didn't know. Um, and, you know, it sits in some closet somewhere, they don't see it or, or whatever. Uh, there's also not a lot of, I, I think a lot of people don't realize uh, some of the impact on the environment that come from houses because they don't really see it. I mean, if you have a stove, you see a flame. If you have a fireplace, you know you're burning wood. But your heater is off somewhere, and the gases are going up a, a flue, and you don't see those, and you don't see the water heater. So um, I think there's, there's, we would like to uh, make that clearer. Not sure if that's even close to uh, what the question you know, wanted. Yeah, and, and well, to add what Jerry said, we have looked at, say, climate attitudes um, and willingness to change out appliances. How willing are you to pay 10% more? How willing are you to replace something before it's useful life? Um, and, you know, there's about 30% of our service territory, roughly, um, that would be willing to do those things. Um, and so, you know, that, that's the movable middle, the early adopters, um, and they're important, especially at the beginning of a program. Um, but again, we're not, and, and they're going to be more important for, say, some of the programs that we launch. But we do provide electricity to 97% of our service territory. Um, and we want to find ways of, of reaching all of them, um, at least from, the, from a brand perspective. Um, and in that case, um, you know, they don't care 
about electricity uh, unless the bills go up, um, which they've been doing recently, uh, or their lights go off. Um, so, you know, we certainly have some challenges when it comes to brand awareness uh, and reaching our customers and making them care. Um, let's see. I think that's, oh. Oh, I follow up wholesale costs are lower when solar and wind are cranking. Uh, some of the challenges that we have are that um, uh, the electric rates are really complicated and it's um, uh, they're hard for people to understand and it, it makes them uh, frustrated. Um, and so we do want to try to simplify this for customers. Uh, converting from gas to electric we want them to be motivated to do that. If you are motivated to do that, uh, it has been not easy to do. It's getting easier. So some of the things we're doing will uh, make it much easier for customers. So uh, there's, we're looking to make quite a change there in the services that we provide and the programs that we provide. But um, in in front of that, we get to establish there's probably there is some changes that we need to make to our branding. It's a little bit old, um, and it's just how we come across. We Gwen said there's a large group of people really don't know who we are. So in a sense, we're really um, you know developing a relationship uh, you know from the beginning. And if we can do this in a uh, simpler um, way, um, make a kind of a get kind of an emotional understanding of who we are. <laughs> Uh, that's positive uh, and easy to understand. I think that's going to help us a lot, but that's hard to do. So um, we really appreciate everybody um, who are considering applying to the RFP. I appreciate your time and spending this time with us. And um, uh, we need some help and we need some uh, some great agencies to, to get us there. So uh, I wanted to put that in. Well said. Uh... But I thank you. That's very helpful. Um, any more? I don't see any more. Why don't we just leave it open for, uh, I don't know, how long? How long is an appropriate time to leave it open? 30 seconds, one minute. To see if any last questions come up that we can answer. Um, and Jerry, I think you explained, but you know, we'll, we have questions We'll take questions until what what date? The thirteenth. The thirteenth. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then we have until the eighteenth to get answers up on the website, but we will get them up as quickly as possible. So we would expect to get them up um, more quickly. Okay. I think that's it. Okay. We'll end this now. We'll post this uh, on the website and look for your questions and uh, look forward to your proposal. Thanks again very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye, all. Bye.